I don't get you people. Like, you never make any sense. Like, you know, like you hate fat women, single women, single mothers, older women, attractive women, unattractive women. Like, you sit there and demean and degrade women all day, and then when you go out into the real world, you can't figure out why women don't want you and are with men that are nothing like you. Oh, I. Like, Someone is always doing something to these victimized men, but when it comes to women, no one is doing anything to them. Men are just always perfect gentlemen. Like, you're complaining about women being fat, not cooking, getting older. I mean, like, we all age. It's a blessing to get older. I don't think that uh, women base their fulfillment on that. Every age has its beauty and its mystery. I think older people should be honored. Um, like, why would I want to be with someone who's obsessed with aging and death? Like, that's the first thing your mind goes to. It's kind of morbid. Um, and, like, you have some sort of issue with my mom, my grandma. Uh, like, who do you even like? You know, it seems kind of hateful. And for, like, cooking, I actually like cooking, but am I going to cook for you know, people throwing fits like I've seen, no, um, yeah, go get your own damn food, um, but, uh, yeah, some women don't like cooking, some men don't like cooking, you know, but there are men that like cooking, there are women that like cooking, uh, and cooking is just a, a woman thing, um, aren't most professional chefs men? Like, women who don't like cooking, they can go with a man who likes cooking. Um, like, and yeah, and that works for them. Personally, I think that men should know some level of having to cook for themselves, and women should have some level of knowing how to cook for themselves. I think adults should know how to cook for themselves, but yeah, for some people, it's just not their thing. Uh, I don't know, maybe they make a lot of money, and they can hire a chef or whatever. Maybe they like to eat out all the time. I don't know. But yeah, with the aging thing, some of these men act like that aging doesn't apply to them. Uh, yeah, men age too, you know. Like people talk about um, fertility or looking older. Um, I mean, men's uh, equipment downstairs, you know, can pretty much stop working too. I mean, have you ever ever heard of Viagra? And like, men's fertility goes down as well. Like, say you have an older man, like in his 40s, and he's with a younger woman. Um, yeah, that increases uh, fertility issues. Um, yeah, there's studies showing that. Um, and with, uh, you know, um, women, they say, well, her fertility has gone down, you know, in her late 30s. But it's also men's fertility that goes down, works both ways. If a woman goes with a man who's in her 20s, she's going to have the same fertility, you know, as someone around that age. So, yeah, it's actually improved more than vice versa. And, yeah, with aging, um, I think that people age differently. Um, I've actually seen, you know, women age better than men. Um, like one of my supervisors I had at one of my jobs, I, at first I thought she was younger than me, but yeah, she was actually in her 40s. Um, she looked like she was like, you know, mid-20s to me. Um, and even you can look at like uh, Megan and uh, uh, Prince Harry, you know, Meghan's three years older than Prince Harry, but, you know, um, yeah, I think Meghan looks, her age, she looks good for her age, um, but, uh, yeah, she looked younger than Harry, um, so, yeah, people act like, you know, aging is such a drastic thing, you know, for women, um, I don't really see that, uh, they act like it starts happening like uh, at 25 or 30, uh, 35. Um, 
yeah, I, I think maybe some things can make people look a bit older, like maybe um, gaining a lot of weight that can make some people look, you know, a bit older, or, you know, maybe they partied hard or, or something like that, and that affected their skin. Um, but, yeah, in general, I don't really see, you know, uh, that much difference until, like, late 30s uh, for some people to 40s or so. Some people talk about, you know, wrinkles and everything. Um, the main cause of wrinkles is, you know, sun exposure. So, yeah, you can, you know, prevent that by a lot by just wearing sunscreen or staying out of the sun. Um, and some people, you know, it's just hereditary. Um, like, uh, I've seen people who had, like, wrinkles around their eyes or on their forehead since they were teenagers. So, um, like, I'm someone whose family doesn't really have wrinkles. Like, no one really has forehead wrinkles or eye wrinkles. Like, my mom, you know, she doesn't, uh, have any, uh, forehead wrinkles or eye wrinkles with age that uh, and yeah it's natural they don't get like cosmetic appointments or anything like that so I mean it's not as cut and dry as people make it out to be like the only thing I have on my face are eye bags um, like there's like a line under my eye but um, yeah I've had those since I was a kid like a toddler like <laughs> four or five years old um, so and then I have a chicken pox scar right here sometimes it'll look like that's you know some sort of line uh, with the lighting but yes it's a uh, mark I got a scar I got from when I was in second grade so <laughs> but yeah I mean you know some people age differently um, some uh, women you can see their age like in their late 30s um, I mean, they're still attractive people. That doesn't make them less of people. Uh, you know, it just means they had a life. Uh, they worked hard. Uh, they raised uh, their kids. Um, I don't see why it would be an issue. Like, it's weird and perverse to expect women not to age or have, an, you know, an expectation uh, to look. 20 or whatever um, forever but yeah this goes back to you know uh, female purity which is you know a made-up concept and not an actual reality and then they keep going on and on about women being overweight and women being fat well yeah women are more likely to be overweight because they can have over 20 babies and they need to eat for all the babies, they need more food and nutrients. Um, yeah, women don't have that many kids these days. Um, but yeah, you know, maybe she got depressed or maybe she can't get to the gym as much. Um, you know, one of the main reasons of people being overweight, not taking care of themselves is um, stress, uh, low self-esteem, uh, depression, um, you know, where where does that come from from women? You know, well, one of the sources is uh, patriarchy, um, where they, where women feel they, uh, their purpose is to be subservient to men. So they put their own self-care, their own well-being on a back burner. With these types of men, they try to demean women to try to get them to lower their self-esteem and so that they won't require much because with these types of men they think that women will be more attainable if they have a lower self-esteem but uh, then they complain that they have a woman with a low self-esteem so yeah the way they go on and on about overweight women it doesn't seem like they're actually unattracted to overweight women it sounds like that they got rejected by overweight women. They went to overweight women thinking that they should have a lower self-esteem and would be easier, but they um, still got rejected anyways. I mean, like, say you have someone who is broke and wine is really expensive, uh, for example. 
if they don't drink wine, why would they be complaining about the cost? But yeah, I mean, there's different reasons people are overweight um, and uh, their health risks um, to being obese, but I mean, um, it's their body, their choice. Uh, and yeah, there are people who um, like fat women, so I'm like, well, they have options too. There's someone for them too. But yeah, I mean, I don't get why these guys can't see their intrusion and the dysfunctional things they set up. Like single mothers don't grow from the ground. There's also single fathers. Um, I mean, there's different reasons. Uh, some people don't believe in getting married. Um, there's different reasons some people aren't getting married these days. Um, but I mean, like, single motherhood can pretty much happen to anyone, whether they were married or not. All these guys come up with is that the woman chose the wrong guy. Well, maybe the guy chose the wrong woman. Maybe the relationship was toxic because of the woman. Maybe it was toxic because of the man. Maybe it was just a toxic relationship. I mean, shouldn't the man pick a woman who's going to be good to him and who's going to be responsible and is going to be a good mother? Yeah, you can never be certain and people can change up after many years, but um, you can teach yourself about red flags and strategies to avoid certain people. You guys want to be traditional and you want to be leaders and that's the natural biological roles but you're blaming all your problems on women and saying you can't leave because of them. To me, it's a contradiction. Like the math is not mathing somewhere. Uh, if it's a natural order of things, wouldn't it just be? Um, oh yeah, that's right. Uh, women are being brainwashed by the media and feminism. This idea that women can't think for themselves, they can't form their own ideas, opinions, and feelings about things. To me, this is molded from the idea that women are all these things that men claim women are without ever even being a woman. And somehow they're supposed to know and tell us how we're supposed to behave, what a woman is like, how she socializes, how she feels, how she thinks of things, what she likes. Everything is supposed to be basically scripted for a woman. Saying like women like this and women like that, women think like this, women think like that. And like a dominion over women, like <clears throat> women should look like this, women should behave like that, women should dress like this, and even, um, you know, talking about with you know, talking about what women do with their lives and bodies, like um, focused on fertility and aging, because then you just point out what's wrong with you, like because men age too, um, men fertility uh, goes downward too, you know, um, and have issues in that area as well. And like, you can see this in so many different ways, um, like, um, for example, uh, the idea that women go for easier jobs. And men and women seem to have different ideas on why this is. Um, like, men seem more likely to think it's down to um, biological differences, while women are more likely to think it's down to social expectation. And, you know, there is data that shows that um, women uh, face more discrimination in male dominated fields but if you look at other things like the trend of women doing better in school um, or in college um, let's say for example um, they'll say well um, that's not due to biology or individual choices that's you know due to some other force like they'll blame feminism or something like that you know whatever that even means um but when it comes to women being you know disadvantaged as far as like um the pay gap you know they'll say well that comes down to women's choices also things like 
women like toxic men or assholes. But I mean, who entertains assholes though? That's what I don't get about you people. You assume people entertain assholes just because they were trying to swift through men. I think you are just upset. Women just won't get into a relationship with the first guy who wants them because it makes it harder and then you view it as unattainable and anything unattainable makes you angry. Context is needed, like nuance is needed in these conversations. You know, what do people do? It's like you go to a place where a tornado happened and you're just like, well, that's just how that area is. It's like you have an inch, you take a mile. Um, I mean, like you miss a lot, you just end up misconstruing things. It's not an accurate depiction, it's not helpful, and I would say that the messages that you're internalizing are not healthy, they're damaging, and you guys don't like the truth for whatever reason. I mean, the messages are just kind of pessimistic. Um, I understand you people have had issues uh, in relationships with women or used or divorced or whatever, but other women being mistrustful is not my fault so why do we have to be blamed for what some other woman do you know you talk about how women are bad to you in this way or that way in relationships it's because you chose wrong and that's because you have a low self-esteem um when you choose women who treat you poorly she was showing you that all along and a lot of you men try to go after women who don't even want you because you don't have a good enough self-esteem to go for women who is actually going to want you and be good to you so stop blaming women and actually look at why you are attracted to women who aren't going to be a good fit for you why do you have such a lack of confidence in the selection process like hold yourself to higher standards like, you're kind of jaded, um, when you're jaded, you'll never attract people who are good for you. Um, having a negative outlook and energy doesn't help you because you'll never attract people who are a good fit for you. Like, you guys are against marriage and all this stuff because you're afraid of losing out in alimony and divorce. Well, maybe marry someone more on your level. Um, you guys seem to have this idea that, you know, um... Women have all this options and stuff, and that like a 20 year old college student can, you know, just get wiped up by like a doctor or something like that. Um, that hasn't really been my experience. Uh, from what I've seen, people usually go for their peers and people who are at a similar uh, education and socioeconomic level to them. Um, you know, that's generally what I've seen. Um, I guess there are exceptions, but yeah, the only um, place I've seen, like, you know, where big age gaps are common is like in Hollywood. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, it doesn't seem that common. Yeah, so uh, it doesn't seem that realistic. So, yeah, I think maybe that idea that you have is part of the issue. I don't particularly agree with the American divorce system, but, uh, yeah, America is a very patriarchal society. Um, it's not a Christian country, but uh, we, do have, we do have separation of church and state, but the majority is... Christian and you know a lot of our morals and principles are based on Christianity and with divorce I guess you know it's a major deal um, you know with a marriage uh, you make an oath to uh, love and honor that person and yeah you basically you break those vows with a divorce so in that sense uh, divorce is seen as a major thing I guess um, so, yeah, that's why they have you go through the ringer, because, yeah, if you're having a divorce, um, you know, usually it's because there were issues in the marriage, so, uh, you know, presumably the vows weren't upheld or honored.
But yeah, I don't know why you're looking to women for sympathy. Um, whatever men are going through in the system um, is a system that was built by men and organized by men. So with what men are going through in society, who are men's problems and who are oppressing men? On Red Pill Alpha Male podcasts, whenever they want to talk about something, it's always connected to women, as if women are adding oppression, as if, and as if women have put laws in place. And yeah, nowadays women pretty much have equal rights to men. There are um, women in politics, there are female lawmakers, but it's not like women are adding any sort of oppression. Like, how long have men been in power? Um, who are the first ones to start a war when they don't agree with each other? These men are trying to look for a place of output and women are the ones, you know, getting that. There's anger placed on women um, and that's not a healthy place. Men should face themselves and talk to themselves and stand up to each other. When men don't have a woman, they think that it must be the fault of women um, when, no, it's because you listened to other men who told you that toxic masculinity was the way to go and then you go and get rejected. What is done to men has been done by other men. They're looking in the mirror but they don't want to accept it. If they admit it, they will admit that they are doing something wrong, which they will not do, so they just deflect and gaslight. Men have higher rates of going to prison and are more involved in violence and crime, um, who are the ones making them do that? Men get more involved in violence and criminal activity and make themselves more at risk of getting hurt or um, getting violence done against them and going to prison um, more so than women. Often women who are victims of crime are very innocent. Um, that's why it's seen as more of an issue um, than a man, for example, who's a part of like um, a criminal gang and gets hurt or killed. Men need to realize that the problems that you face aren't caused by other people, but by yourselves. And you know what I just don't get? I don't get these women that fight, yell, and scream for their own oppression saying a bunch of destructive nonsense like you're so male identified acting very aggressive and hyper masculine honestly uh, by their own standards and being very harmful to other women acting like feminism is so toxic and such a bad thing and fighting on behalf of men who resent feminism for giving women um, rights and freedoms and sit there and go along with a rhetoric that's against them. It's like a non-thinking position. Um, like maybe you're just weak-minded, maybe you're just a weaker woman. I don't mean that in a mean way. Um, I mean it just is what it is. Um, I think what it is with these women is that they are trying to um, stay on top of this hierarchy of uh, misogyny, basically. Um, they're trying to maintain their humanity in a culture that doesn't really support that for them, so they try to step on other women, they try to, you know, um, point out other women's flaws to help them stay on top of this hierarchy. I mean, it's clear that, you know, they see themselves as inferior or less than men, obviously. Um, I don't really see myself as inferior to, to a man. Um, I'm just as intelligent as a man. I'm just as com competent as a man. Um, my reflexes are just as good as a man. You know, the only thing that a man really has on me is physical strength. You know, the way these women behave, um, you know, very condescending, very patronizing, um, very assertive, uh, very domineering. Um, it implies that, you know, they're not very happy or secure with themselves and these are 
actually not, you know, very uh, feminine behaviors. They're actually very, you know, masculine, you know, by uh, their own definitions. Um, femininity is like an empathy, um, a softness. But like, I didn't make the rules. I'm just going by the red pill definitions. I think what it is is I think that pick me's are frustrated with their lives and they want to give other women frustration. Like, they do everything these men say, you know, they try to be the perfect woman and they don't get much in return, you know, they still see men going to uh, these other women that, you know, they trash um, and yeah, uh, basically it doesn't seem like they get that much appreciation. Um, that's my take on that. I mean, like, I don't understand why you would gas up men that want to see you broken and miserable. Their whole premise is to keep you at the bottom so that they can be uplifted. Like, they don't care about you and they aren't on your team. They are just trying to brainwash you and manipulate you. It's not beneficiary to you. It's not going to add any good things to your life. It's just like a man beating you up. Uh, he is doing that to control you and instill fear. He doesn't love you. He doesn't care about you. He's beating you up because he wants to control you. He wants to make you have a low self-esteem so he can victimize you. It's about lowering your self-esteem so you're too afraid to go anywhere else. That's why they have a problem with women with self-respect and who stand up for themselves and they um, refer to these women as masculine and combative because they won't go uh, with their program of being a doormat. Being feminine to them is just being stupid and being quiet and being uh, a doormat and being easily manipulated. It's because they want to walk all over you. Women wanting to be treated with respect and with the same standards as men and this is somehow a bad thing. When women start voicing their opinions and saying that they don't want to be treated badly and they don't want to be treated as less than, then they get called feminists. I mean, these dudes expose themselves all over the internet and they told you how they really feel. It's not about, it's not about good woman, bad woman. Um, it's called misogyny. They could be a problem for thousands of years and as soon as you start behaving how they behave or as soon as you respond to their behavior then suddenly you're the problem and you're the one that made everything go wrong and that is why feminism had to exist and still to this day they act oblivious to what feminism actually is and they're still trying to demonize it when you want to prey on women and you want to have access to women and you want to use women and be abusive towards women, then you're going to have a problem with feminism and you're going to speak out against it because they want to victimize and that's why they have a problem with it. Now, people like this like to act like women have a problem with men for responding to these men's actions. Like you can see we have these misogynists and woman haters all over the internet um, whenever there's a misogynistic content creator they become very popular um, but when women respond to that then that is somehow the problem and people like to bring up women's preference and men to somehow show that they have uh, some hatred for men or something um, like people like to bring up that women have a preference for tall men. Um, yeah, some women have a preference for tall men, especially short women seem to have a preference for tall men is what I've seen. But there are plenty of women that don't have a height preference or they prefer average height men. And, you know, um, I've seen that shorter women tend to prefer taller men um, and taller men in my experience, tend to prefer shorter women. So, um, from what I've seen, it works out fine. So, or you know, uh, I like to bring up how women have a preference for men with a lot of money. Um, and yeah, uh, some women do. I don't think it's that much of a priority for most women. Like, if I'm making 
twenty or thirty thousand dollars. I don't see what the problem is with a man that makes forty thousand um, dollars. But I mean, to me, like fifty fifty is like kind of taking care of a man because you know it's not going to end up being fifty fifty, especially if uh, children are involved. Um, I mean, unless you're both making a lot of money, then, you know, it might work out okay that way. Um, then, you know, they talk about the idea that women like aggressive men. And they point out, you know, studies or different things to show that women like aggressive and toxic men. Um, like when the book Fifty Shades of Grey was popular, uh, you know, they were using that to you know, try to prove something, but I mean, that's just a book, like, um, I like, you know, uh, horror movies and things like that, that doesn't mean that I actually want to be in those situations, now, as far as studies, you know, um, I mean, you need contact, you can't just go off of what one single study is saying, that is, It doesn't prove any three-dimensional truth. Um, I mean, yeah, some women want these things, some women don't. Um, women have um, different wants, um, preferences, um, they have different sexualities. I mean, it's multifaceted, it's not cut and dry. But, you know, the whole thing with these um, preferences that women supposedly have is that men created the system for women to seek out these things um, like um, like money, height and size, aggressiveness and patriarchy women are seen as less able-bodied um, in the past women were actually seen as disordered um, you know they're seen as uh, not being able to provide for themselves not being able to protect themselves so yeah of course that's going to lead to a preference in women for a big tall man uh, that is aggressive to protect them and to provide for them so yeah I don't think that women are the problem because they have some preferences or responded to some misogynists um, I think that More of what it is is that people have more of a lack of respect for women, um, and it's uh, it's not innate; it's internal. It's not, you know, um, much to do with the reality of the situation. More of what I've seen is um, women tend to deify men in a way where they're expecting reciprocity. Um, which, in my view, is like a manipulation tactic, which doesn't get the best outcomes. In my opinion, it takes a weak mind to deify a human. Um, like, uh, it's like, well, I'll do this and this and this for them, and they do this and this and this for me. But, I mean, it's not always going to work out that way. So, yeah, in my view, it's a um, dysfunctional thought process. But, yeah, I think women see value in men and appreciate men because, you know, they come from a place of mother, of nurturer. I think more of the problem is the other way around. And, you know, the other thing is um, a lot of men act like just because... Uh, a woman doesn't want to talk to a strange man on the street or a woman um, doesn't want to sleep with him or is not romantically attracted to him you know um, they'll go and take it personally and take it to mean that uh, that these women must hate them like I'm not attracted to women I'm not attracted to senior citizens um, that doesn't mean that I hate women or that I hate senior citizens. Uh, women and senior citizens are fine people. 
I'm not against relationships. I'm against relationships with the wrong person. Relationships with the wrong person can lead to a lot of problems in your life, a lot of big problems. So, yeah, I don't think it's something to take lightly or to jump into willy-nilly. That's the thing with these red pill arguments is that they are so flawed, um, they fall apart so easily. If you just question them a little bit, that's how, you know, these are not arguments. These are tactics. They're fear tactics. They're shaming tactics. Um, basically, what they try to do is they try to devalue women so that they'll feel they'll be easier and more attainable. There is a reason, um, you know, that women are apprehensive of men, you know, at night, on the street. I mean, it's not other women that they're afraid of, um, but yeah, these males want to take it personal when it was never really personal. Now, me, I don't see red pill as actually wrong. Um, some women are attracted to misogynistic men, some women are attracted to aggressive men, um, some people are attracted to toxic people. I think it puts women in a vulnerable situation and exposes them to dangerous men who, um, or, you know, men who just want to, um, toy with women. But I don't think all red pill men are this way or are bad people. Um, but yeah, I mean, some people just want a red pill man or a red pill woman and live their red pill lives. Um, and yeah, I mean, um, I see women sometimes say they want you know, alpha man, they want a leader. Well, you know, um, that's your role. Uh, is to be the weaker one, um, you know, not put your foot down about anything, not question anything, but yeah, it's wrong to assume that all women want these things or all women look for these things because um, we don't, um, and yeah, I think that's part of the problem that red pill men have because they seem to have, you know, this idea that all women are a certain way and want a certain thing um, when, you know, it's just a minority and, you know, it's fine if they want that minority, but they're thinking that all women are like that minority. Of course, you know, they're going to be dissatisfied when they find out that not all women want the same things. Not all women are attracted to those traits. Um, we're not all attracted to the same traits. But yeah, you know, red pill men for red pill women. I'm like, well, you know, they found each other. If their relationship is working for them, then great. Um, I'm happy for them. But as for me, I'm not interested in that sort of relationship because I actually do have my own interests and desires in a man. And I want him to meet my interests and desires as much as I meet his. In these women's case, they don't feel that they will meet a man's interest and desires so they will just go with any man who will have them you can tell this because they always talk about what a man wants but they never talk about what a woman wants they sometimes talk about it has to do with money or resources like uh, prostitution or something like being bought it's like it's like a desperation with no standards but i mean yeah if their relationship is working for them then you know good for them um but yeah with these type of people <clears throat> they like to complain about you know other women that aren't a fit for them like these type of people like to complain that women aren't cooking these days and then um well i'm just like well there's more women um in the workforce and you know there's more women building these days you know um historically um, it is true that men would build and work, and women would stay home, do housework, and cook, but, you know, um, that's not how it is today. And I'm just like, well, uh, just because that type of woman is not for you doesn't mean that um, it's not going to work out for her uh, in a different relationship.
if it works for them, I'm like, why does it matter? I'm like, well, you know, good for them. You know, they found each other and their relationship works. Or, you know, the other thing with um, these type of guys with red pill men is um, they'll be attracted to, like, um, a party girl at a club or a bar, but then complain she's not the type of woman that they want and complain that uh, this type of woman um, is not attracted to them. And, yeah, I mean, it's like an irony. And I'm just like, well, you need to find the type of woman that you want and not complain that um, another type of woman is not the type of woman that you want. And then, you know, they have the whole thing where, you know, they complain about being used by women uh, for money or whatever. And to me, I'm like, well, you men started playing these games and then when the tables turn, you don't want to play anymore. Is that really the thing though? Is that, you know, really the problem? Um, the thing with men with this mentality is that they feel like they can be in the dirt and they can be in the trash and they feel like they are still worthy of so much even though they aren't living that life. Of course you don't deserve someone who is living a whole different life than you. Rather than telling men to work on themselves or be better husbands, red pillars betray this myth that women are always seeking to get over on men or they're always seeking a better option. Is that really the problem though? The problem is that these men's strategy is that they try to get women to lower their standards and self-esteem to where they think they're at. So, you know, of course they set themselves up for failure. In the past, women had to settle for men who treated them uh, poorly and abusively. Um, they were stuck in bad marriages and relationships due to stigma or lack of other opportunities. Is that what you guys want? Someone who has to settle with you and is with you because they are stuck? Uh, sounds like you're the source of your own misery. Now, I've seen how, you know, uh, some of these kinds of men um, complain about their wives, you know, complain about um, getting divorced. And, you know, um, I've seen a lot, you know, of these kind of men, you know, complaining about their wives, complaining about a divorce they went to. And um, I remember this one man, you know, he was talking about his wife is nagging him and I'm like nagging him nagging him about what and this guy who's like 40s 50s he's like well she will nag him for example about leaving his socks on the floor um like she'll tell him like why can't he pick up his socks and um yeah to me this is this is uh it's like you're not your wife's child, you know. Um, Five-year-olds know how to pick up their socks and put it in the dirty clothes. Um, and then, you know, another instance, um, this guy was complaining about his wife getting a divorce. And, you know, basically he was talking about how, like, she was older now and he was just tolerating her. Um, they were like in their 60s and um, he basically thought, you know, he didn't need to be romantic with her, things of that nature, because she was older and, uh, you know, she was saying to him that, you know, she thinks she can do better than him and, and his response to that was at 60. Um, so, your wife, um, doesn't deserve to be treated romantically because she's up in age and he doesn't see a problem with that. He didn't understand why she wanted a divorce. She's just supposed to be in a unhappy relationship, like, and we're somehow supposed to feel guilty for having rights and freedoms because it makes it harder for them. That's not women's problem. It's like you think that women are superior. Red pillars claim they know female nature. They don't understand women. They feel threatened by women having options or 
being able to provide for themselves in order for these males to feel like they have value they have to manipulate and subjugate the very woman that they're trying to be with they think that bullying somebody and being tough and hard is the way to go uh, they don't know how to be respectful they think women want hyper masculine aggressive men um, maybe some women do but not all women do um, I'm not personally into masculinity I think sometimes that can be a turnoff um, yeah, I don't really pay attention to feminine or masculine like I think that men and women can be at their most feminine or masculine as the situation needs I don't think it's an either or situation I think there's a difference between like um, like um, there's a difference between masculinity and toxic masculinity I don't think masculinity is inherently toxic mm -hmm. traits like dominance and aggressiveness can be good within context like I don't want a man to be aggressive or dominant towards me but aggressiveness can be used to protect a family or things like that notice how these males never talk about anything to do with their own life they're obsessed with women and what women are doing and how they can control women and how they can manipulate women they don't talk about anything of value they troll women and talk about women and about making them feel insecure enough to date them um, they talk about modern women how nobody wants you how you're lonely and they try to affect your life with their negativity like they aren't giving you good traits about themselves to make you want to give them a chance or make you want to be with them like they're trying to make a relationship that doesn't exist they're trying to is there control and relevancy that doesn't exist they're trying to trigger someone trying to make someone care like trying to get someone who doesn't want anything to do with them to engage with them to get some type of energy as passive aggressive and narcissistic like they want to be important to someone that they are not important to if they want you to be everything they say they want you to be why don't they collectively speak to that that you are these things why do they repeat the same negative things over and over they are saying you aren't valuable because they don't want you to be valuable they are trying to establish dominance by demeaning females and competing against females because it's about male supremacy over women but you know it's just not working because it's just not the reality of the situation um, males have the XY chromosome which is a mutation the Y chromosome is an incomplete X chromosome so yeah life on earth started out asexual so the main difference between uh, men and women is that um, women um, carry children and give birth to children and men have more physical strength um, and they're more aggressive so yeah um, why in nature uh, do males tend to be more aggressive it's to compete to get to the females so on a primal level here if you look at the origins of life the origins of humanity why do males build why do they create art um, it's to impress the female is to get access to the female it has nothing to do with male supremacy it has nothing to do with males being smarter than females um, it's about getting access to the female.